Time for the Inside Corner. J.P. Morosi and the Flash, your travels, taking you to the concrete yes. jungle. Great and to happy here. to have you. Nice to see you this morning. Good morning to you in town for our showcase game tonight on MLB Network. But before that, we have a lot to sort through because we all saw the video of Anthony Rendon and that fan having that conversation. What's the latest from Oakland? Well, Lauren, right now, MLB is still investigating uh, what transpired. Obviously, okay. as you mentioned, there was a video that uh, was all over social media towards the end of last week. So MLB now investigating this altercation between Anthony Rendon and a fan in Oakland. We do expect there to be some resolution on this in the next couple of days. I would expect the first half of this week we'll probably see some announcement on potential resolutions and okay. or discipline for Rendon. I would point out that in the past, just based on past precedent, MLB has issued suspensions when there have been uh, sort of adverse interactions between players and fans, uh, including just for gestures. So obviously this is something that MLB is looking at very carefully here in the next couple That ballpark is so unique because you have to walk right. by the fans perhaps more in the days to come, and you'll keep us posted. We are so used, JP, to seeing Robbie Ray dominate. So when on Friday it was just not what we're used to seeing, and he said, my forearm, there's a little bit of tightness there. I don't think it was a surprise to any of us. My question, I guess, is, is this pure? purely precautionary or is there something going on? Well, I think it's the latter, Lauren. It looks really? like Ray could be gone for a, a month, potentially longer than that with the Mariners rotation. Obviously, to your point, he's a former Cy Young Award winner who just did not look like himself, especially in that second inning of his first start of the season against Cleveland. So with that flexor tendon strain, he is likely to be out again into sometime in May, more than likely. It's ironic, Lauren, because the Mariners had such great luck with injuries last year with their rotation. They were really solid. Uh, and of course, now this is a light. We'll likely see Flexen stepping into the rotation. They've got Castillo as, as the ace. I'm a big believer, Lauren, that with this rotation, Gilbert and Kirby will tell the story. If they're able to come back from all the innings they threw last year and have really solid seasons here in 2023, I still like this team's chances to make the playoffs. Obviously, in the same division, the Astros having their own rotation injury issues and, of course, no Verlander there any longer. So not the way the Mariners wanted to begin the season, clearly losing Ray for this amount of time, but they do have in Flexen someone they trust a lot. When the velocity was up for Ray in spring training, it's mm -hmm. so unfortunate, JP. Gary Sanchez heading to San Francisco, minor league deal. What's the deal? What's the timeline here? Do we know? I think that the really important thing, Lauren, is that he does have that opt-out on May 1. Our John Heyman reporting on that, that he'll make $4 million at the major league level if he ends up getting to the big leagues, and that he does have that opt-out by May 1, which tells us that Sanchez has a very short amount of time to, to prove that he's there in a major league catcher, but also that the Giants have to make sure they give him that opportunity early on in the season or risk losing him. I think the larger conversation here, Lauren, has to do with Joey Bart, the, the former first-round draft pick of the Giants. He had some back tightness. He was put, placed on the injured list here over the weekend. There are questions about how much they trust him as an everyday catcher going forward, and that's why they've got Roberto Perez and now Gary Sanchez as well. It's a good point because it goes both ways. The Giants have to see enough of him right. in a month's time to make a decision. Uh, it's time for Chevrolet opening week storylines. I feel like, JP, one day I'm going to ask you about Brian Reynolds, and you're going to get all <laughs> attitude and say, you've been asking me about this guy for five years because I have, but I don't understand what is going on. Right, okay, so here's the summary, Lauren, of where things stand. Reynolds and the Pirates in the winter time, it looked like they were far away from an extension. There was the trade request made by Reynolds, and then things changed. There were conversations. They got, according to our Mark Feinsand, very close to agreeing on the years and the dollars. It'd be seven years starting in 2024 for $100 million. So the, the, the contractual terms, they're pretty close to agreeing on. However, there's the request now from Reynolds' camp for there to be an opt-out after 2026. And so for right now, there's a philosophical difference, contractual difference, however you want to describe it. But the reality right now, Lauren, is that they're they're not able to, to get to the finish line at this point in time. Now, as they're working through this, is there a way to potentially move, move that opt-out date back a year and, and find a compromise point? We'll see. The good news, if you're a Pirate fan, hoping there, there to be an agreement here, there there's, has not been a hard and fast deadline of opening day from which they're walking away. So clearly there's still some conversation going on, and we'll have to wait and see if that opt-out uh, lingers there in the early days wow. of the season. To it's try been to a fight long right. time since the trade been a request. long time, yes. And after the trade request, I thought, all right, yes. this, is, this is the Months. future. This is what's happening, JP. 28 <laughs> years old, by the way. His fifth yes. year with the Pirates. JP, thanks, thanks so much.